Last time we talked about using this truck toolbox as an enclosure for the electronics and the battery and showed just how perfectly this fits here. It, uh, it's in the exact position to clear the solar panels. Uh, not only that, but also if the solar panels are up uh, flat, horizontal, uh, the lid can also open and close and it perfectly misses. Uh, I could not ask for a better size electronics enclosure than this truck toolbox. And the very first thing to do is just uh, measure twice, make sure it's exactly centered where I want it uh, before marking and drilling our holes. The first thing I did was mark where I wanted to drill with a punch, and then I came back with a 1 8 inch drill bit. The 8 inch drill bit makes a great pilot hole for my larger drill bit, and it also lets me make sure I know exactly where I'm drilling by checking underneath. Then I come back with a step drill. This makes it real easy to go through both the aluminum and the steel rail that I'm going through to get up close to the 3 8 diameter I want. And then I'll finish that off with a regular 3 8 inch bit just to give me a nice clean hole. And that bolt's too long, but I'm just using it for alignment for right now. And then the same thing on the other side as well. I'm going to use uh, a pilot hole followed by my step drill bit and then finally a nice clean 3 8 hole and then I can pop that 3 8 bolt right through there. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> that doesn't even have the nuts in there yet. And of course, these bolts are too long, but they're just temporary. I'll add the correct size bolts to my list for next trip to the hardware store. To add strain relief and make this weatherproof, I'm going to use these cable glands uh, using a piece of scrap solar wire to check the size. Looks like the 3 8 size will work for this. There's already one hole that uh, formerly would have held this box into a truck, so I think I'll just use that hole, widen it for the cable gland to go in there. Again, I'm using my step drill bit, which uh, really cranks right through this uh, uh, aluminum here. And then I'm checking as I go with the cable gland to make sure I don't accidentally make the hole too big. The cable gland comes up through the bottom, and then I just have to hand thread the plastic washer on the inside. And I'll do the exact same thing for the other hole. Here's just a different camera angle so you can see what it looks like from below. Uh, with my other hand, I'm just uh, threading that internal washer on. And this is just an old scrap piece, but when I'm ready to do this for real, all I have to do is speed this up through here, get it where I want it to go, and then just tighten that down. It'll hold it in place. It's waterproof and it makes strain relief. Now I'm going to mount an electric outlet on the outside of the toolbox, and this will be so that I have a very convenient to place to plug in uh, for power when we're all done. So to start off, I have a two-gang metal weatherproof exterior grade uh, electric box. I basically just want this centered, so I measured it, uh, trace it out, and then I also want to know exactly where the center of this is because there's a center hole on the back for a little piece of conduit and an easy way to find the center from a square is just to draw a kitty corner, uh, make an X in the middle, and that will be exactly centered. Then what I can do is drill that out and I'm going to use my step drill bit again here to drill out to a size appropriate for a uh, a short piece of conduit, a uh, conduit nipple, if you will, uh, to be able to run my wiring through to the box. Put some caulk on the back here before putting it on. To hold the box in place, I used four sheet metal screws and installed a conduit nut. So one of those insulating bushings, and one thing it does is since this is metal, that'd be a bad wear spot for uh, any wiring. So I just put that on and it gives it a nice, nice edge. And then I basically did the same thing for inside the box. Again, the insulating bushing so there's no rough edges. And because the inverter already has electric outlets right on it, I'm basically just going to pass an extension cord through here for the electric outlets.
can't believe it, I actually have the right part for once. This is a 20 amp male plug, so that'll be perfect for my 20 amp outlets. And the very first thing you have to do with these is uh, unscrew it and take it apart so that you can slide uh, the one part of it onto your cable. I am making sure to use appropriate cable for a 20 amp circuit. Yep, that'll fit. This is 12 gauge, three conductor. It's got a hot, neutral, and ground. The first thing I'm doing is scoring the jacket. You don't actually want to cut all the way through because if you do, you can nick the conductors inside. So I score it and then just kind of wiggle waggle and it'll come right off. Uh, after that, there's some uh, material inside that just kind of gives the cable its shape and I can just cut that off, get that out of the way. Uh, once I have that, uh, I'll have my conductors in here and I'll just separate those. And before forgetting to, I'm going to slide the body of the plug onto the cable. And then we can strip the ends of the wires. Then insert the wires into the screw down terminals and tighten down those screws. The white wire is going to go to the silver screw, the black wire to the brass screw, and the ground wire to the green screw. Then I slide the body of the plug back up, line it up with little notches and where the screws go, and I tighten those screws in from the front that holds the whole thing together. And then I tighten down the screws for the strain relief to the cord. So now I'm gonna bring that power cable through the box, remove the casing, and install electric outlets. Wiring up the electric outlet is almost identical to wiring up the plug that we just did on the other end. Uh, first, I'm just going to score the jacket, wiggle waggle it, pull it off, uh, cut off the extra material in there, uh, strip off uh, the insulation on the ends of these wires here, and then screw them into the terminals on the electric outlet. Again, uh, white on the silver screw, black on the brass screw, green on the green ground screw. I'm also uh, going to make sure that this connects to the green ground screw in the box here. Uh, the other thing I'm doing is I'm just installing one electric outlet to start with uh, so that I can test the system. Then I'll add the second one after that. To do the testing, I inserted the probes from my multimeter into the outlet. Right away we see zero volts, it's not hooked up to anything. But then on the other end, I plugged in to the UPS that I'm using as an inverter uh, in the back of the truck box and then turned that on. So we were uh, temporarily generating power from the battery to the inverter to the outlet. There we go, 119 volts. Sixty hertz. After testing, I killed the power. I installed a second twenty amp outlet in parallel to the first. I installed the foam gasket and the weatherproof outlet cover. Next time, we'll be working on the DC disconnects, the combiner box, and wiring up the project in general. A big thank you to patrons who help make these videos possible. As always, please, please, please like, comment, subscribe. Share these videos with your friends. Uh, we're getting close to 100,000 subscribers. I'd love to make that happen. Until next time, stay charged up.